Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing today? Okay, we have installed Reaper, we have installed the SWS extension for Reaper, and we have installed the Repack add-on. And now it's time to ramp things up even more. The rest of the enhancement add-ons, that's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're gonna be tackling VSTs. What exactly are they and how they fit in the big picture and a little bit of their history, not, not much, but a little bit. Then we're gonna be looking at downloading and installing the following VSTs. The Tokyo Dawn Records Nova EQ is specifically for being the high pass filter. And I'll explain what a high pass filter is when we get there. The Vox and Go Span. Again, I'll explain what a span is when we get there. And then finally, the TB Pro Audio DP Meter 4. This is something that long form narrators, I think would love in that it shows the real time RMS values going on. Now, if this is your first time in the video, especially if this is your first time in Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell, setting it to all. And also watch the video all the way through. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna be happening in this video as well as all, almost all the other ones. And I don't want you to miss anything. As always, if you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below. And now with that, without further ado, let's get started. What exactly is a VST? I mean, if you've been in voiceover any length of time, you've probably heard this term VST. What exactly is it? I know you probably know it's, it's, a, it's an EQ or a compressor or whatever. Yes and no. Think of yourself in a recording studio, an actual recording studio, especially if you're a musician or a singer, if you've been in a music recording studio. You see the microphone, you see the cable, you see the mixer, you might see outboard equipment like a compressor, an EQ, crossovers maybe, um, a headphones amp and distribution center, the monitors, those speakers, you know, that type of thing. All of that collectively is what's known as studio technology. And that's the ST and VST. Now the V is virtual. And as you might've guessed, virtual meaning inside of a computer or programmed or whatever. So a VST is a piece of studio technology equipment that has been um, computed or programmed for use inside digital audio workstations and other things. And the three packages that we're gonna be discussing in this video, along with, like I say, all those other ones, those wonderful things from Waves and Isotope and FabFilter and all that, those are all VSTs. And now with that, let's go with those three VSTs that we'll be downloading in this video. Starting with where we left off in the previous video, we have just installed the Repack and the SWS extension Dilibs, Dynamic Libraries. And now we're going to be going to the Vox and Go Span webpage. What exactly is a span? Well, it's in capital letters, as you can see here. And just like Reaper, it's an acronym. It stands for Spectrum Analyzer. In fact, the Vox and Go Span is a fast Fourier transform audio spectrum analyzer. If you want to Google this, this is an extremely deep rabbit hole, but suffice to say that this graphic here shows you basically what's happening. It can actually show you how your voice is interacting with your recording space. So let's say that you have this deep rumble or, or maybe a resonance or maybe a, a, a wonkiness, a nasal kind of characteristic to your audio. Maybe it's piercing. Maybe it's, it's like you're talking through your hands. Well, SPAN can help you figure out what frequencies are basically overriding all the other ones. And then in EQ, you can turn them down or cut them as they say. That's one application of this. Now to download it, we can go to the audio unit uh, DMG and we can save it to our downloads as we have with everything else. And also the VST and VST3, save it to the downloads. Now let's take a look at the user guides for a second. And I say both of them here. You see you have your primary user guide and just user guide. You would figure that there would maybe be a little bit of an overlap and there is, but not very much. They have very, very disparate topics within them. So it's great to be able to look at both of them if you can, if you have the time. And now with that, let's go to the TDR Nova or the Tokyo Dawn Records EQ, the Nova EQ. Now, what exactly are we doing here? Well, uh, to be honest, I love Reaper, and I think Reaper is a very cool DAW, but it does have its weaknesses, just like every other DAW does. And one of its great weaknesses is what's known as a high-pass filter. 
it is a setting in an EQ that allows high frequencies or higher frequencies past a threshold to pass through that filter. It's sometimes called a low cut filter. In other words, if it's below this threshold, then it's cut. And you can see in this graphic here what I'm talking about. This is the actual audio here and is being just absolutely smashed at 28. And you see this slope here, it says 72 dB per octave. What that means is past 28, every halving of the frequency, which is an octave, it subtracts 72 dB from the audio amplitude. It is a severe brick wall, if you will, filter. So nothing is going to get through it. Right now, re-EQ doesn't have this slope parameter adjustment. It's set to roughly about 18 dB per octave, which is okay, but for voiceover work, it could be better. And what I do is I set mine to a certain threshold, and the slope is roughly 36, and we go from there. Not as steep as what you see, but it's much steeper than what re-EQ can provide for us. That's why we're going to be downloading and installing it. So to download it, we go to Mac package here and we accept and download the EULA. If you want to, you can receive a newsletter from them. Just knock yourself out with that. Okay, we're going to save this to the downloads, just like we did everything else. Now let's talk about the user manual for a second. Just like for Repack, it's not a PDF. It's actually a web page, but you can click on this print page icon and print it to a PDF. So there you go. The final piece of the puzzle, the TV Pro Audio DP Meter 4. This is one of the most wonderful things I could find for audiobook narrators and for e-learning narrators. You know, we've got to shoot for that kind of weird target, right? It's negative 3 dB peak, but the RMS has to be somewhere between negative 18 and negative 23. I shoot for negative 21.5 as is indicated for the RMS integrated. There are ways to do this, and in the Reaper for Voice Talent course, I'll demonstrate how I do that. But to download this, we can go to Download, and we go to DP Meter 4, we go to OSX, and just like with everything else, we download it to the downloads. Now notice it's a zip file, not a DMG. That's going to come into play in just a few minutes. Its manual is a PDF. So again, we can either right click on it and say save link as or whatever the browser says, or you can do a control click if you're on a two button mouse, or you can do the two finger double click on a pad and then download the PDF. Now that's taking care of all the downloads. Now let's talk about installation. Okay, under downloads, we're going to start with the Vox and Go Span audio unit DMG. And we click on it and it verifies it. And once it's verified, it opens the DMG. Okay, so here we have the DMG mounted and the contents of the DMG itself. Before Catalina, I should have been able to drag span.component into the components folder. And if you do have a Mac OS before Catalina, you should still be able to do this. In Catalina, however, you'll see that it rejects that. Right now, you have to understand, this is an exact fresh install of Catalina. I've actually gone into Disk Utility, deleted all the partitions, reinstalled Catalina, let it do its thing on the uh, Macintosh HDA disk. So it's not tweaked yet. You may have already tweaked your OS to prevent this obstacle from happening. But there is a workaround. You can double click on the components folder, and then you can drag the spandout component into it. And of course, you have to authenticate because you're outside of your user ID or user directory. Okay, so we're going to stay here for just a little bit. This is fine with the span, so we're going to eject it now. And now we're going to be going to the VST, VST3 version of the span as well. And again, it verifies it, mounts it, and then presents the contents of the DMG file for installation. There's the DMG, and there, there are the contents. Now again, we should be able to do span VST to VST and span VST3 to VST3. If you were before Catalina, you should be able to do this, no problems. But for Catalina, again, they're both rejected. 
So again, we're going to be going VST, double click on it to pull up the VST window here and drag the VST file. And of course we have to authenticate. Everything or almost everything we do outside of the user directory, we have to authenticate. And then the same thing with VST3. You double click on it. We drag the VST3 file into the VST3 window. And because it's been such a short time since we've authenticated, it'll allow us to go through. Okay, so that's spam. So again, we eject and it's gone. Now, let's talk about the TDR Nova DMG. We click on it again. It verifies and then it mounts the DMG and then presents us with the contents of the DMG itself. Now, in here, again, if you're before Catalina, you should be able to drag VST into VST3, or sorry, VST into VST, VST3 into VST3, and then component into AU or component. Okay, it could be component if you want that to be there. Unfortunately, um, yeah, it's not happening because again, we're in Catalina. So we're gonna go component to component. And again, we have to authenticate. And then we do the VST3 to VST3. And we do the VST to the VST. And we have to authenticate on that one. Okay, and that takes care of the TDR Nova. We eject TDR Nova. That will get rid of that. We do not need these three windows any longer. Now the final piece of the puzzle, the dot zip, which is the DP meter four. So we hit that, it unarchives it, and then we have this PKG file. It's an executable file, so we can double click on it. And we're greeted with the install DP meter for window. We hit continue. We hit continue again after the change log. Here's the EULA, the end user license agreement. We hit continue. We say, yes, I do definitely agree. Um, just a little bit of word here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, no problem. Install. Authenticate because we are, again, not in the user directory. And actually what it's doing is it's doing exactly what we did with the span and with the other things uh, in that it's putting things in VST, the VST3 and component directories. And if you want to move the PKG file to trash, you can certainly do so as long as the zip file is still here. I'm going to move it to trash just to be sure. In the next video, we finally tackle running Reaper for the very first time. And also, you'll notice in the description below that there will be links to the three programs that we've just gone over, as well as the Mac-centric fundamental sequence playlist. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell setting it to all. This is Stephen Gonzalez with Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and I'll see y'all in the next video.